Hi everybody, Rob here from Prior Studios and um, welcome to this video which is um, one that I promised and it's all about using uh, the 3D fog within Fusion. Now before we jump into Fusion I'm just going into Cinema 4D here um, just to show you the scene that I'm going to use. So you can use image planes or anything that you would normally use in Fusion, um, any kind of 3D objects that you've created inside there, uh, all your cameras and lights and everything we'll get to in a bit. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on uh, this very, very simple scene. And it's just these four kind of Lego figures and they're just staggered so that we can set a camera up and uh, and just be able to see the fall off of the fog. And um, that's all I was doing really. Now, something to bear in mind as you're doing this sort of thing is um, scale. Uh, now, the Lego figures by default are quite big. So I'm just going to add a cube to the scene and I know this is going to be two meter cube and that's there. So this is going to sit within two meters. I'm pretty sure of that let's just drag it over and have a quick look. Um, I could resize them, but I'm really just kind of just getting my uh, a reference here. So I know that front to back is, you know, a touch over two meters, which is fine. Um, I just wanted to be sure of that because you'll see in a second why that's important. So I've got a plane, which is this floor object, and then the four Lego figures, uh, nothing else in the scene. I'm gonna use lights and cameras inside of Fusion. And so I'm just gonna to go to File, and I'm gonna export this as an FBX. And I'll just write over the previous one uh, that I had there. Yes, I do want to replace it. Now, don't need to export any lights. In fact, I'm not gonna export anything other than just the, the mesh and the normals. Uh, in fact, and we'll go for the latest version, which is 7.5. Press OK, that's exported. We can shut this down. Now, if I just navigate my hard drives, uh, I should be able to find uh, on my desktop, I have this. I can drag that FBX file straight from a Explorer window into, ah, now. What's happened here is that I think, I may be wrong, maybe somebody out there can tell me, but I think that the Cinema 4D file that I exported might have been a, a version of FBX too new. So let's just go back into here. Uh, we'll overwrite that previous one again and go to the options. And let's just go for, let's go for 2014. So it's a couple of years old. Um, I'm not sure what this build of Fusion works with. So let's try that and I go back into here and drag that into my scene just let that do its thing and we should find that once that blue ring stops that that's going to work okay so also something to bear in mind is uh, i've had similar problems with alembic and um, the very latest alembic doesn't seem to work um, but the previous one does uh, so just keep that in mind as you're working um, we should find this catches up in a second. Right, here we go. So we have our FBX inside of Fusion. And there's a few other things we're gonna need, but actually we can probably do with maybe just four or five very simple nodes um, in this workflow. So I'm just gonna put that up here into my left-hand viewer and let's just zoom out and see where we are. Hopefully I haven't made it too small. There we go, it's up there. Right, so my axis point is obviously off, uh, which is odd, but we'll deal with it. Let's just bring that down. So it's gonna sit roughly on our grid. And you can see, even though I did change some of the scaling it's still fairly large compared to our fusion grid okay so I'm just gonna drop that about there okay maybe bring it back the only reason I'm doing this is just so that as I work it's gonna sit um, fairly close to the the, the world grid itself so it's um it could do a 
being lifted up a bit, but we'll, we'll work with it. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to, first off, we want to be able to see our Lego figures in here. Um, so to do that, let's just go, well, first of all, we'll add a 3D uh, merge, a merge 3D, and we'll stick our FBX into there. And we'll get ourselves a camera and a renderer. So let's put the renderer over there. We'll look at that in the right hand view. Uh, our camera, I'm going to move down here. And let's just go to our renderer and I'm going to enable lighting and shadows. And uh, I'm going to make sure this is on software renderer. Um, for my particular system, that's what, that works better. Um, I'm using a K5000 uh, Quadro card from NVIDIA. Um, and that works great in some places and it's not so good in others. So you can use the OpenGL renderer um, or you can use software. Anyway, to be able to get a bit more detail in our scene, you need to turn on lighting and shading here. Um, so if we now zoom in a touch, you should be able to see, hopefully you can see this in the video, that we have our Lego men and they're, you know, they're in the scene, they're looking all right. I'm just going to have a better look at these guys. Okay, so they're in the scene. Now, let's get the camera, um, which is way back. Let's move that back. In fact, let's do that in this view. Let's bring that down. Let's go to our renderer here. If we click on our renderer, we can tell it which camera we want to look through. We only have one in the scene, so that's okay. We'll bring this down. You can just see as that passed through the floor, which is there. So let's now swing our camera around. So we're actually looking at our figures. Let's give it a wider focal length. And also, I think we're going to want to set our image size. So let's, let's just do something. Uh, 1280 by 720 uh, make sure that fits and now we can go back to our camera and I'm just going to change the focal length here just to bring our Lego figures roughly into view like that so what do we have going on here and why can't we see anything with these guys well firstly we don't have any lights in the scene so let's add a spotlight so we've got a spotlight which added a second merge, which I don't want. I want to have all my lights, if I add more than one, uh, up above, which is just the way I like to work. So I'm going to drag that spotlight down and you can now see automatically that that's kind of doing its thing. Uh, if we just reposition it. And I'm going to angle it down just a bit. And maybe round just a touch more. Now I like to work visually, so I'm gonna just bring this over. Okay, so it's open up that angle there and I'm just going to change the drop off I'm going to make this a slightly warm color like so uh, shadows should be turned on that's fine um, I'm going to make this a linear fall off just because I like the, um, the the look of that kind of nice gentle fall off with my lights Let's go to 0 0.005. Okay, right. So let's get on to the actual fog, which is what we're really here for. So what we want to do is we want to have, actually we'll add a background first as well, otherwise we'll, let, we'll still have this checkered thing going on. So let's add a new tool, go to 3D image plane. We'll dump that into our merge. And let's just add another tool. Let's go to a creator and use a day sky. And I'll link that in. 
I'm not going to worry about settings too much. Um, what I do need to do is back right up and shove this guy right back. Um, you need to make the scale of it much, much bigger. Probably bigger than that, I would have said. Let's go 200. Okay, so let's drop it down. And you can see it over here in our view. Uh, it's dropped down a bit too much. So, this is our image plane, way, way back in the background. Let's just pump that right up. Okay, now the only reason I did that really for this is purely so that we have a, a, a background rather than the, the, the transparent checker, um, which we don't want. Okay, so we've got a camera, we've got our imported mesh, we've got a background, which has been driven by a day sky. We have one light. Uh, we might add another light. Let's maybe add just an ambient light. So let's go to 3D light ambient. Now ambient lights in Fusion aren't necessarily considered a light source. You might think of it as just kind of a, a value increase. So if we plug that in, um, you can see that we've got a massive increase. Let's just reduce that right down until we get some of our detail back. And we're really bringing it in just to kind of be, uh, just to lift the, the scene up. But it's better doing it this way than it would be trying to do it with a, a color correction grade after and adjusting the gamma. This just lifts the whole scene uh, in, in a slightly nicer way and it lets us see what we're doing. Okay, so back to the fog. Now, let's add a fog to the scene. So we'll go add tool 3D and we'll go fog 3D. Now there are different ways of adding fog in Fusion, but this is my preferred way, especially when working with proper 3D work, work like this at the FBX. Now you might think the fog gets plugged into the, the merged 3D, um, as so often that's how we work with, with Fusion uh, in a 3D workspace. Actually this is kind of like a, it's not a post effect, but you need the, all the 3D data to go into this for it to work. So we'll unplug our merge from the render node, plug it into the fog node, and then we'll plug the fog node into the render node. And now you can see, right, okay, well, that's obviously far too foggy, but actually we're not even seeing the fog in the view. So let's choose show fog in view. And I'm gonna choose a really bright color. I'm just gonna go for a red fog to start with. Um, and that will help me visualize what I'm doing. So I said it was about 250 or just over 200 centimeters, which is a, a unit in Fusion is a centimeter. So our distance of just over two, 200 centimeters from front to back uh, will mean that our furthest bit of fog is going to be, you know, we need it to be about two meters back. Now I'm going to go a bit further because we've got the floor on the image plane. So I'm going to go to about there. And then our near fog distance is, you know, the kind of in front of the lens. I'm going to push that back a bit. I'm going to push that a bit further away from the camera so that our first Lego figure is almost entirely fog free. And then if I adjust this back slider, we'll start seeing a slightly different fall off. So now, let's bring this forward just a touch. I'm going to increase this figure to 500 and that will give me a little bit more leeway to play with. If I push this back all the way, we'll start to see the sky come back in as well. And the edge of the plane is now in view, but I want that back one to be almost completely obscured. You can see him just here. It's just the edge of him being slightly obscured there. Maybe you go even more. Okay, so now we have, uh, let's just take our camera. I'm just going to move it very slightly. Um, to the side and then I'm just going to rotate it a bit more just so we can see our figures a bit better. Okay so now if I go back to the fog and I give it a color which is a bit more realistic so a bit for a gray color bring that back and now we have what you might expect which is you know a full-on 3D fog uh, obscuring our characters as they go back into the distance um, and that really is it. 
Now there's a whole lot more you can do with fog. Obviously it's not just about obscuring things in the distance, but it does help give some depth, especially when you start animating the camera through it and adding some variance to the actual fog itself, which you can do. You can see there's a, another input here, and this input is the, the fog density. So you could go, let's say, add tool. Now this will look ugly because it will need a lot of work, but if we go to um, a fast noise, we could plug that into here and then you'll start to see you can see there's some variance in the in the fog now this is looking particularly horrible but you can see how that works and um, we can just crush that up and you know add more detail if you need it um, and this is all full 3d um, so i'm going to delete that because it's particularly ugly um, but i wanted to show you the fog um, a few people had asked me to show them how it works uh, and this is it it's a really really simple setup um, I said you could do it with four or five nodes um, if you ignore the, the lights that I added um, and the, the render nodes and you could probably just do this with a, a just a background node and today you could probably do it with five nodes but, but really the idea I'm trying to get across is that actually it's really really simple um, using Fusion to add fog into your 3D scenes as well as your shot footage um, maybe in the next video I'll use some actual footage and some images and we'll add some depth maybe using a photo um, just to show you how you can make a displacement um, for a photo uh, add some real depth to it and then use exactly the same photo to produce something in the near ground add some fog so that you're making a complete 3d scene out of a 2d image uh, i think that might be quite an interesting one to cover but if you've got topics you'd like me to show you um, please let me know leave a comment below and uh, i'll hopefully get onto it as soon as possible Thanks very much. I've been Rob Bergman. Goodbye.